Is proof of stake better than proof of work? In my opinion, the battle is won hands down by a proof of stake, but I'm going to get into some detail and then you can make up your mind on your own. I'm talking about proof of stake and proof of work within the context of blockchain technology and specifically cryptocurrencies. I did a video already about how blockchains work and blockchains are distributed ledgers. In the case of cryptocurrencies, it's a ledger being a recording of transaction history. And because it's distributed, but there can only be one version of the blockchain that everybody agrees on, there has to be a way that we decide who gets to write the information to the blockchain. There are different participants on the blockchain called nodes and then there are specialized participants on the blockchain called miners who in this form of distributed consensus do what is called proof of work the purpose of these special nodes called miners is to validate the transactions that's to say that they are accurate and also to order them and put them in the correct order on the blockchain proof of work mining specifically works by these miners competing to solve what's called a cryptographic puzzle. It's actually hashing, but they're basically doing some really difficult problem that requires a lot of processing power in order to decide who gets to write the next blockchain. And that's how that distributed consensus is figured out. And the way it works is that even though there is a lot of input necessary from the miners competing to write the block, when that new block is broadcasted to the rest of the network, it's easy for the rest of the network to say, yay, this was actually correct. So there are some issues that come up when proof of work mining is done, which were not so apparent in the past, even though people knew about them, but because cryptocurrencies, specifically Bitcoin, which works on proof of work mining, have been gaining a lot of traction lately, all of these issues or disadvantages are becoming more apparent. Some of these issues include the biggest one probably is environmental impact because of the high electricity cost, because doing the difficult problem requires so much processing power. And then there's also centralization, which is what I really want to focus on here because centralization is what blockchains and cryptocurrencies are trying to get rid of. One thing I forgot to mention is that for proof of work mining, once a new block is created, there is also a mining reward. And so the miners actually get some of the cryptocurrency as a reward for validating the transactions. And the purpose of this whole process is that we need to have honest nodes so you are providing incentive for people to actually come and buy the mining equipment so they can make money off of what they are doing but then they are also through the actual protocol and the work they're doing we can be sure that what they are saying is true this however can be defeated if too many of those people have all of the processing power and that's called concentration of power so Concentration of power can happen in a number of cases. The first one is actually in who is manufacturing the mining equipment called ASICs because there are specific companies that produce this equipment. And then there is concentration of mining power because if the right person has enough money to buy the equipment and they also know how to use it, then they can potentially gain more than 51% of the mining power on the network, which, which would allow them to lie when they're writing the blocks and potentially lie in their own favor. They can also deny service to other people so they will refuse to put in their transactions, which is what they are there to do is to write transactions for everybody on the black blockchain. Another way there is concentration of mining power is through geography. I was just watching a video from Angus Antonopoulos about how there are only two provinces in China where there's a main concentration of mining power. So that's another way. And then another way is through mining pools, which many of you know about, which is where individual miners can decide to pool their resources together in order to make sure that the profits they're getting are more evenly distributed over time. Other issues include that of loyalty because you need nodes to be there and dedicated and they can simply decide to go and put their processing power towards validating other cryptocurrency blockchains. Also related to loyalty is the fact that the block reward that is given as an incentive to miners is going to decrease over time. So miners may want to leave in order to go to other cryptocurrencies that will give them better profits. And then even though those transaction fees are still there because of the block rewards are no longer there, those transaction fees still have to cover the cost of setup for the mining equipment, for example, or running all the software. But the mining equipment fees and electricity costs are still going to be very high in the future. So that's one thing to hold in mind. So. I know I'm bashing proof of work right now, but proof of work was solving the problem of 
honest nodes being there to validate the blockchain. And it was really, the whole thing was pioneering and that was what was originally put in the Bitcoin white paper. But there's an alternative to this called proof of stake, which also solves the problem of needing to have distributed consensus. And so how this works is that instead of the miners competing by solving a difficult problem to decide who gets to write the next box, it depends on who actually has the most stake or the most amount of investment in the cryptocurrency or the blockchain. So stake or investment means both the amount as well as the amount of time that person has been participating in the blockchain. So those two things decide the probability of which someone is likely to be chosen to write the next block. Whereas for proof of work mining, the probability is dependent on that person's computer processing power. By the way, in this version, coins are minted instead of mined, and those special nodes are called stakers or foragers instead of mining. So what are the advantages of proof of stake? The first kind of obvious thing is that you don't need those specialized computers, so there aren't those high electricity fees. Another thing is that even though there is the same issue of the monopoly where somebody can have lots of the coins so they have more of a right to stake and so can increase their wealth over time basically the rich get richer that's the same problem that already exists for proof of work coins the difference is that it's a bit more difficult for those really rich people to get 50 percent or 51 percent off the coin so that they can actually change and uh, lie or deny service to the rest of the network so if you think about bitcoin for example it would cost way more to invest 51% say of the market cap and also keep in mind that if you're buying that much you're going to be pushing the price up so you're going to need even more than what you would already think it was just looking at it then if you were to want to buy enough mining equipment to have 51% of the hashing power or the mining power on the network. As well as it be more difficult to make that kind of investment, it's also more likely that if there is a monopoly, it's not really a monopoly, but if someone were to have 51% of the coins owned, they are more likely to be benevolent because if they hurt the network, they're going to lose all of their own investment. And that's different from miners who can just get the block reward just by having the specialized equipment and then they can sell the coins. So it's more likely for miners to have the possibility of decreasing the value over time in the case that they have a monopoly. So they're not as likely to be benevolent in the case that that happens. But remember, it's also already more difficult for that to occur than in proof of work coins. I was talking about loyalty when I was talking about proof of work. And so there is much more loyalty and remember that that you need to have those nodes dedicated and there to validate the network all the time. Proof of stake coins are also more likely to have lower transaction fees because they don't need to cover the cost of mining equipment. Examples of proof of stake coins include Paircoin, Next, Lisk, Particle, my one of my favorite coins, and then Ethereum also is moving into proof of stake. And remember that there are different ways of implementing proof of stake protocols. One example is that instead of just focusing on amount and the time, you can make it so that someone else is more likely to be able to write the block than another person who just recently wrote a block. There's also a lower likelihood of governments being able to overreach and create things like barriers to entry, like licenses. That's what they were trying to do in Venezuela. I just learned in proof of stake coins because the equipment needed is a lot less conspicuous. Proof of stake coins also don't need you to both buy the initial mining equipment and then update it over time. The transaction times are also likely to be faster. And these issues that are specific to proof of work coins like Bitcoin, such as the environmental impact and the high electricity costs, those are only likely to increase over time because there still has not been complete blockchain adoption and that's probably going to get even better over time. It's just the way they exist today, maybe things will change, but right now, proof of stake is so much better. It's so obvious. The real reason why I think proof of stake is better is because the focus of blockchain technology is on decentralization and taking away the power of the centralized institutions that we have today. So I think that in the long run, proof of stake is more likely to actually achieve the goal and the promise of blockchain technology. So that's what I think. Thank you for watching. My name is Desiree. My channel is Crypto Ramble. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.